An implicit sequence is a representation of some sequential data set that doesn't explicitly store each element of the data set in the computer's memory. The important thing about implicit sequences is that they can represent a sequential data set without requiring space that's proportional to the size of the data set. In fact, their space requirements can be quite small while still giving access to the elements in sequential order. Let's look at this in detail. An implicit sequence is a representation of sequential data that does not explicitly store each element. We've seen an example in this course already. The built-in range class represents consecutive integers. The range is represented by storing only two values, the start and the end, and then the length and the elements are computed on demand which means that we can represent an arbitrarily long sequence in only constant space, which is much better than requiring linear space in the length of the sequence. So remember how this works. We have something that exists in our minds, the number line, the set of all integers. A range picks out some subsequence of that with finite length, that gives us a starting position and an ending position, which are best thought of as just before the corresponding number in the number line. And then the range includes that starting number, but excludes the end. So it's inclusive of the start, exclusive of the end. Here's a way to think about how it's picking out that range. And this is something that we can now build ourselves if we want to. So just to remember how ranges work, if I say I have a range from 2 to 2 billion, this is something that takes only constant space to represent. I can compute its length very quickly without having to enumerate all of the elements. And I can also pick out the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 element, which will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 plus two is one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's a range, let's build it ourselves. We'll build a class called range, which has a constructor, which takes in the newly created range, a start and an end. It remembers the start, it remembers the end. And what happens when somebody asks for the length? Well, let's start out with a version that says self.end minus self.start. Now, this is one of the conven convenient properties of having an inclusive start and an exclusive end, is that the length of a sequence is just the difference between the end and the start. And what about element selection? So we implement that with the special method getItem, which takes in not only the range to get an item from, but also the index of the element that we want. And we'll just, uh, well, let's actually check and see if k is less than zero or k is greater than equal to the length of this range. Then why don't we raise an index error? That's the same thing that would happen in a regular range. So here's a regular range. If I ask for element number something larger than 2 billion, and it's telling to tell me index error range object index out of range. Otherwise, we'll return self.start plus k. So let's have x here be a regular built-in range from negative 2 to 2, and we'll make y our range from negative 2 to 2 and see if these two things behave the same or not. So we have two different implicit sequences, one of which is built in, that's x, and one of which is what we created, that's y. Uh-oh, we found a difference already, so let's fix that. We'd like to have a string representation that returns a string that is in fact a Python expression that will create an object that represents an equal thing. 
So that means we can construct a string that just says range from start to end, where the two things that we fill in to these two gaps in the string using the format method are self.start and self.end. How are we doing now? Well, it looks like we're pretty close. Um, what's the length of x? That's 4. What's the length of y? That's 4. What's the sec element at index 2 of x? That's 0. And how about the element at index 3? That's 1. And what if we look at the same thing for y? Oops. y's element at index 2 is 0, and element at index 3 is 1. Excellent. So we've built our implicit range class. Now there's some functionality we haven't covered yet. So for instance, what happens if we ask for the length of the range from two to negative two? Well, there aren't any elements raising from two all the way up until negative two, so the answer would be zero. Unfortunately, in our version, we get a nonsensical answer, which is that we returned a number greater than zero. And that raised a value error in Python because it realized that len should always return something greater than or equal to zero. So we can fix this problem just by adding a max here, which says return either zero or the actual length if the length is at least zero. What other problems can we notice? Well, it's the case that in x, I can get the element at negative one. That's the last element. Y's negative one element is an index error. We can fix that as well just by saying that if k is less than zero, then we'll change k to be the length of self plus k. So that means if k is negative one, then we'll get the element at index four minus one is three, which is exactly what we want. Okay, now I have an object that's even more similar to what the built-in range does. What's the length of a range from two to negative two? which is a nonsensical range that contains no elements, well, it's just zero. So we've built our first implicit sequence.